Hi, everyone, and welcome back to AWS Julie. In today's AWS Noteworthy, we're covering the top highlights from the week. Please remember to, and I want to start off talking about all the open positions that we have at AWS and the resources that I'm seeing that are available to help you land that job that you're working towards. I have a few YouTube videos relating to this process, but I also shared a lot of open roles this past week on LinkedIn. So check those out and let me know if you'd like a referral or if you have any questions. I also found on LinkedIn this past week, a three-part blog series. The entire series plans to explain how to prepare for technical cloud roles, how to understand your current skill set, and provide exercises and resources to help you develop your hard and your soft skills plus tips on preparing for that interview. The first blog talks about different technical roles available at AWS, but I really enjoyed the second blog that focused on foundational technical areas to understand when you're new, but also how to prepare yourself for the interview. And I'm really looking forward to the third part in this blog series. Another thing I saw in the community this week that was noteworthy was AWS's global expansion. And I'll add a few links if you want to read a few different articles about how Amazon is planning to add eight more cloud regions and 24 more availability zones. And it aims to triple the local zone footprint with this global expansion. But to be fair, to balance the awesome with the not so awesome, I again saw something negative on Twitter revolving around how solid and updated AWS training is hard to find. And this is something that I'm passionate about changing. I'm actively working on a list for every AWS certification, but I'm also paying attention and recommending training from people who are out in our AWS community daily, answering our questions and helping however they can. And one of the great things about this is it shows that those creators, those content creators are really passionate about the content that they create. And their training is most likely to be more solid and more updated as the new updates, new resources, services, and so on come out from AWS. Now, moving on, I saw a bunch of upcoming events for our AWS community. And the first one I want to mention is that International Women's Day is coming up on March 8th. And there's this really awesome She Served and Thriving at Amazon event that's for women who are veterans and are seeking career opportunities at AWS. And I'll added a link to the flyer with a link and a QR code if you're interested in joining. And I'm going to also add another link to all of the AWS events that AWS puts on, just in case you're interested in other events. And along those lines, another noteworthy highlight for another AWS education program is kicking off this week, and that is the She Builds AWS Certified Solutions Architect Program. It's starting today. And another AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner She Builds program will be starting in April. And another thing that I'm working on is maintaining an active list of all AWS education programs that are available for our AWS community. And I found another one last week, the AWS Get It. And this program was designed by AWS to encourage girls ages 12 through 13 to consider a career in tech. And I'll add a link in case you know anyone that might be interested in joining that program. Now, one of the things I'm really excited about that has developed from this series is that I did receive a few comments saying that we want to know more about you, Julie. So I'm adding questions of the week to this AWS Noteworthy. If this is boring and you don't really care, let me know in the comments. And I won't include this in next week's episode. But the first question of the week was, do I have a mentor? And I really love this question and I actually have several mentors. I actually have my original mentor from back in 2018. Actually, August 2018 is when I approached him for the mentoring and I still talk to him daily. Now, several of you have asked, who is this mentor? I think you would like to use him as your own mentor as well. He's a very private person and I'm not comfortable sharing his name. I've asked him several times if I could do that. And I've actually linked his name um, in a few of my LinkedIn posts. And he was like, what are you doing? So um, I'm not going to share his name, but there are programs available, especially in AWS, if you're interested in mentoring. And if you're interested in me being a mentor for you, I'm happy to do that. Just let me know, you know, however I can help out. That's my main passion is helping out paying it forward to our AWS community. But AWS has mentoring programs internally for AWS employees, and I'm a member of all the mentoring programs that AWS has. I do have a internal mentor 
Lynn DeVore. He's been really awesome. We've just been working together since last November. So that relationship is still pretty new. And then I have uh, one of my favorite mentors, Eric Robertson. He is my technical curriculum architect, and he's a senior member of my team. And I've been going to him constantly since my first day at AWS. And the really cool thing about mentoring is if you're a mentor, that's really amazing because you're in the community and you're helping others. But in that mentor process, you're also bettering yourself and you're learning and you're helping yourself. So it's a win-win situation for all. I also have a few mentees inside internally from the AWS mentoring program. And I have a few people on LinkedIn and one on Reddit that I mentor. And I really do enjoy that aspect of this AWS community. And another question that I received is, what are you studying now? And and that's really a hard question because since I finished the AWS certifications, I have kind of been pinging around trying to get a little bit deeper and a little bit more knowledge into networking. But one of the main focuses I've been working towards the past few weeks is Terraform. And I'm really enjoying that. And I'll add a link to the course that I'm taking, but it's from one of my friends, Derek Morgan. And so far it's an awesome course. I'm learning a lot. And I'm finding that it's very similar to CloudFormation and also IAM policies and all that. So the learning curve is not as steep as I thought it was going to be. And I'll also want to include in this some articles and some really cool sites that I've seen this week while I'm out there researching and learning and looking and trying to keep up with all of the new updates from AWS. But I really enjoyed this one article. It talked about the top 2021 AWS security service launches. And that was really amazing because it covered what was launched in 2021. And then it also covered, you know, what is coming, what's being foreseen for 2022. And I want to wrap up this week with a really cool diagram that I saw. I really love that visual aspect of learning. It's one of the key elements that's helped me being able to see where services sit, how they communicate, visualizing that is is really important for my personal learning. And it's really amazing when you're out in the AWS community, you recognize and you see, especially when you're creating content for training, that people learn in so many different ways. Training is so personal, but I really enjoyed this. And it's from a friend of mine, Navi, and it's actually from a presentation that she builds and she presents for the She Builds community. So just wanted to give her a quick shout out and thank her so much for all she does for that community. And that wraps up this week's AWS Noteworthy. Please let me know in the comments if you are seeing things that I'm not, if there's someone out there that's doing amazing things that needs to be recognized, or if there's new training or new services that you want to hear about. Thanks so much for stopping by, and I hope to see y'all again real soon.